Hey, what's up everybody? It's me, Keeks, back with a brand new video, and I'm be diving into my first spoiler episode review of Avatar The Last Airbender. So, I'm gonna be talking about episode one, Aang. I'm gonna be going into details. Um, so this video does include major spoilers for the episode. And so I'll be doing it like this. So we're gonna do episode one today, and episode two tomorrow, and then so on and so forth as the week goes on. So you guys, with all that said and done, let's jump right into it. I thought the first episode of Netflix's live action adaption was a very good start to this new series. We are introduced to the world through an intense escape scene of an earthbender spy disguised as a Fire Nation soldier. The show dives right into showing us some pretty cool bending scenes right off the bat with this scene. The fire bending effects are most impressive in this episode and the series as a whole. The earth green looks great in some scenes, but in others you can really tell it's CGI. In some scenes it has it kind of looks like almost like clay in some scenes. So that's something they really need to work on. Um, we also do see a lot of air bending in the scene. The air bending look great. In fact, um, as far as like how the bending looks in the show, I would say fire bending number one looks fantastic. Air bending second that also looks great. Um, number three, I'd probably put uh, I'd probably put earth bending. And number four, water bending. Water never looks great in CGI. Everybody always talks about how it's hard to do water in CGI. So, yeah, so water bending would be number four. Well, anyways, moving on. In this next scene, we finally meet uh, Fire Lord Sozin and learn that he has let false plans get out that he will attack the Earth Kingdom. We then see him burn the Earthbender spy alive. His life ending in a gruesome death showed us that this show means business and doesn't plan to hold back. And this is just a taste of what's to come soon in the episode. This opening scene was done very well and I quite enjoyed it. It introduces us to the action of the show right away, which is something that this show like really needed to do because... One of the things that everybody's going to be focused on is, like, how good is the action is. Like, how good is the bending action scenes are going to be. And so by showing us this action scene right away in the beginning of the show is awesome and fantastic. And they did a really great job. I especially like the revelation here that Susan distracted the other nations um, by having them have their eyes all set on the Earth Kingdom, expecting him to attack there, while he has his uh, his eyes on the Air Nomads and killing the Avatar. We are then introduced to the Southern Air Temple and the Air Nomads, and of course our Avatar, Aang himself. Now first off, I just want to say that Gordon Cormier is amazing as Aang, and he does a spectacular job. Now, of course, there are some areas he can improve on, but I'll mention those when I get when I get to them. But he just does a phenomenal job as the character, embodying uh, Aang's like fun and loving sign, his kindness and everything. And he's just an overall great kid. Um, I've seen a lot of people were kind of like mixed reviews on his acting, but seeing as this is his first role, um, as I said before, he's great in some scenes. There's some stuff he can't approve on, but I'm not going to hold anything against him since this was his first role. And a lot of times with child actors, their first role is never like their greatest, like, like really never. Um, now, I just want to say that the scene everyone has been talking about where they say Aang was flying. Um, he is clearly not flying if you actually pay attention. If you watch him, you can see that he's just airbending through the air and not actually flying. It's more like he's more like floating around and just kind of like bouncing himself off the air. 
it is not flying at all. He he is, as one might say, falling with style. The main focus of this scene is the Southern Air Temple preparing for the Great Comet Festival and waiting upon the air nomads from the other temples to arrive. But during all this, we are giving a very emotional scene where Kiyatsu reveals to Aang he's the Avatar. I love this scene. I think the show did a really great job at displaying Aang and Gyatso's relationship. Gordon was really amazing in this scene and really had me feeling emotional, especially when he says to Gyatso, can't I just keep pretending I'm your friend? I don't know if Gordon can make his eyes water or if they were putting drops in his eyes for the scene, but he has so much emotion in the scene that it is one of my favorites throughout the whole entire episode. And Gyatso's response to him in the scene is something else that makes me love the scene so much. It is such a great scene. And if it does not make you feel emotional when you watch this scene, I don't know what to say. It's just, it's a great scene. I enjoy every minute of it. It's just amazing scene in the entire episode. Now, after this, we get a scene where Aang talks to Appa, and basically he monologues about how he didn't want any of this power, and that he just wants to be normal. This monologue scene, and there are some others that they have uh, throughout the episodes, where they basically have a close-up shot of Aang while he's talking about how he doesn't know what he's doing, or that... You know, he's the avatar and he needs to be helping people. They weren't the best and they weren't uh, guarding strong suit. And I'm really hoping that, um, honestly, the dialogue in the scenes could have been written better. But a lot of stuff is also stuff that they could have shown. Like here, he talks about how um, he knows who he is, that he loves goofing off with his friends and eating banana cakes and playing air ball. And honestly, they could have actually actually shown that in the show so that's one of the things about uh the show especially in this first episode um there's was more like telling than showing um we see them setting up for the festival but honestly i think it would have been done a better job at showing us the festival and showing us having and showing us um Aang having fun and everything um Instead of, you know, just hearing him, you know, talk about how he likes having fun. So, yeah, these uh, monologue scenes, I really hope that if we get a season two, that this is just like a season one thing and that they move on from doing like monologue scenes like this. With that, Aang decides to set off on Appa to clear his head. We finally get the scene of Sozin and his army attacking the temple while Aang and Appa get caught in a storm. This scene is one that most of us have been anticipating since we knew it was coming. My favorite part was the start where we see that one monk walking around and then firebangs just start landing all around him. And he starts shouting out, brothers and sisters, we're under attack. The scene is so intense and shows how ruthless Sozin is in wiping out the airbenders, setting those on fire who might already even be dead. Of course, the scene ends with him overpowering Gyatso, who is protecting young air nomad children. And Gyatso's death, while I thought uh, would have been more fun if it was more of an intense fight scene, um, they really did a great job at displaying um, Sozin's power here, and especially how powerful he was, you know, with the comet and everything. And this also leads into we, us seeing Aang go into the Hour State and freeze himself before cutting to our introduction of Katar and Sokka. Ian Owsley is great as Sokka here, and I see a lot of people calling him way too serious in the role. And that is not how his portrayal as Sokka come across at all. Sokka in this show comes across as someone really dealing with too much responsibility 
that has been put on them far too early than they are prepared to deal with. But his fun, sarcastic side is still very much present in his character. And as for his sexism, it's more of a different thing in the show. Sokka has the mindset of uh, his dad put him in charge, so I'm the leader. Everybody's got to listen to him. And he never takes Katara's thoughts you know, into consideration, especially since she's a girl and she's his younger sister. Now, Kyoantio as Katara was pretty good. Like Gordon, she is great in some scenes and could use and improve in others, but I really liked her in the role and thought she did a good job. Um, this was apparently one of her first roles. She's been in some things like, um, and with an E, um, and some other minor things, but apparently this was like her first, like, major role. So, it being her first role, and like I said, sometimes the actors are the, when it's the first time, it's not always that great, especially when they're young. So, I'm not gonna fault her for anything here and not judge her too critically. It's just like I said with Gordon, some scenes she's great in, some scenes she used improvement on. Sokka and Katara, of course, discover Aang, which leads us to Zuko and Iroh's introduction scene. I think Dallas Liu, who plays Zuko here, did a really phenomenal job portraying Zuko's, not only his determination, but also his obsession in capturing Aang and how that drives him throughout this season. Also, the show did a great job portraying his relationship with his uncle Iroh. Paul Sun Hyung Lee was also greatly cast as Iroh and did a great job embodying our tea favorite tea loving uncle. After Aang wakes up in the village of Wolf Cove, which I want to say one of my favorite things the show did was actually have the names for all these places. If you just watched the cartoon, you probably wouldn't know that the Southern Water Tribe Village was called Wolf Cove, or the Northern Tribe was Agnaquella. They never mentioned that in the show, but they were revealed in the comics, and it was cool to see them see them include that in the show as well. Aang quickly learns that he's been frozen for a hundred years and that the airbenders have been wiped out, which leads to the first scene between him and Katara, where he learns she's a waterbender. And this was a great scene between the two. Um, Aang kind of takes on like sort of like a a mentor kind of role to Katara as the series goes along, helping her with her her bidding and stuff, just by you know giving her positive advice and stuff, and like telling her when she's how good of a job she's doing. And so that was that was great to see as the show went on. Um, this quickly ends when Zuko arrives looking for him. Sokka, who is torn between giving Aang up because he lied about being an avatar and protecting him, uh, faces Zuko. And here we're given a pretty good fight scene between the two. And Sokka here holds himself up against Zuko a lot better than he did in the cartoon. Aang, however, reveals himself and agrees to go with Zuko if he promises to not hurt the villagers. Zuko agrees and takes Aang as his prisoner, putting him in the brig. Here we get a scene where Iroh speaks with Aang, who asks him why the Fire Nation started this war. I enjoy this scene and love that we got a scene with Aang and Iroh, and we also get another one later in episode four, which I also enjoyed. I always loved the scene where Aang and Iroh interacted while looking for Zuko and Katara in the Crystal Catacombs of Bossing Say in Book 2. So I love that they decided to have a few scenes with the two here in Season 1 of the live action series. Aang makes an escape from the ship reuniting with Katara and Sokka, who have come to rescue him on Appa. They quickly head off to the Southern Air Temple, where Aang, even after learning about the devastation of the Fire Nation, 
sees the horrors for himself and discovering Giotto's body goes into uncontrollable rage, putting him into the Avatar state. I thought this scene was very powerful and I thought they did a little bit better than what they did in the cartoon. Here, it's the memories of Gyatso telling Aang how he is kind and generous, and that he can't think of a better person to be given the power that he has that actually calms Aang down. It's Gyatso's memories and the memories of the airbenders and air nomads that calms the Aang down. Instead of Katara telling him that Sokka and her are his family now, which also came a little bit too early in the show, like... You know, I, it works for a cartoon, but here, that was something they ended up moving um, to the finale, and it honestly, it works a lot better there. So yeah, anyways, everybody, as a whole, the episode was great and fantastic. It's a great start. It is kind of slow. They do repeat a lot of things and stuff, but I feel it really gets the show going. Um, everybody does a great job in it. Um, I'm giving it an 8 out of 10. Um, definitely one of the uh, better episodes of the season. And so yeah, that's the uh, it for my uh, spoiler review for episode 1 of Netflix's Avatar The Last Airbender. Episode 1 Aang. Um, really great. Really love the introduction and everything um, to this live action show. And yeah, I'd say give it a chance, you guys. Just... just Give it a chance and let it let it let it do its thing, okay? If you don't like it, you don't like it. But if you get it, give it a chance and don't compare it to anything, then you'll probably enjoy it. It's very enjoyable. So yeah, eight out of ten for this one. I will see you um, in the next one for my episode two review. So anyway, guys, if you enjoyed the video, drop a like, leave a comment down below, and I will see you in the next one. Love you guys.